It's a major disappointment for the pro-life movement. The Supreme Court reverses Louisiana's pro-life law this week in a 5-4 decision, siding with the state's abortion facilities. In the case June Medical Services v. Russo, the Supreme Court ruled that Louisiana's law posed substantial obstacles to women without significant benefits to their safety. The law required abortion facilities maintain the same safety and health standards as all other surgical centers in the state. Justice Stephen Breyer wrote the opinion. He was joined by the other liberal justices and Chief Justice John Roberts, who wrote a concurring opinion. Roberts claimed the Louisiana law was, quote, nearly identical to the Texas law struck down four years ago in Whole Woman's Health. The Catholic Justice wrote, I joined the dissent in Whole Woman's Health and continue to believe that the case was wrongly decided. The question today, however, is not whether Whole Women's Health was right or wrong, but whether to adhere to it in deciding the present case. Justice Clarence Thomas, also Catholic, dissented, writing, quote, Today, a majority of the court perpetuates its ill-founded abortion jurisprudence by enjoining a perfectly legitimate state law and doing so without jurisdiction. As is often the case with legal challenges to abortion regulations, this suit was brought by abortionists and abortion clinics. He continued, our abortion precedents are grievously wrong and should be overruled. Liz Merle is Solicitor General of Louisiana. She defended Louisiana's law at the Supreme Court for this case and joins us now via Skype. Liz, first off, what's your reaction to the high court ruling this week? Well, you know, it was deeply disappointing to see um, the chief side with um, the liberal justices on this issue. And, and I think it's very disappointing for women and so I'm not sure what I can say about that other than we were we were pretty disappointed and um, to see how that came out it's a good law it's a law that protects the health and safety of women and our record was different so it was disappointing to see the chief not recognize that Liz I had the opportunity to be in the Supreme Court for the oral arguments in this case and the plaintiff for the abortion business claimed this Louisiana law was quote identical to the Texas law that had already been struck down. Can you explain why that's not true? And were the justices not able to distinguish the two? Well, I mean, when you have several justices who don't want to distinguish the two, then you, you know, they're just going to find all of the commonalities and ignore the differences. And, and it was a different law and it was it was in a different, entirely different regulatory structure. And I think the most significant difference is that we require all doctors who are medical staff of ambulatory surgery centers to have privileges. We require doctors in office-based surgery um, practices to have admitting privileges if they don't have a residency, but these clinics were being exempt from that requirement. Mm. What did you make of Chief Justice Roberts' concurring opinion? The fact he supported the Texas law in Whole Women's Health versus Hellerstadt, but then ruled against Louisiana's law. You know, I mean, I think that we have to look at the opinion and recognize that what he did, even though he took, even though he voted that our law was unconstitutional and was similar to the Texas law and needed to fall, he actually rewrote Hellerstadt. I mean, he's we. That is a significant change from Whole Woman's Health. He interpreted it differently, and he interpreted Whole Woman's Health in the way that we had advocated in our brief. Wow, Liz, how concerning is it to you that it was the abortion business that challenged this law and took it to court, not a woman? Does that raise red flags for you? Absolutely. I mean, we we flagged that issue early on. And we still think it is a hugely important issue. I think it's deeply, deeply disappointing to continue to substitute women's voices and override the actual voices of women who testified in behalf of this bill, the bipartisan support that came from the legislature from both men and women, and substitute that for the voices of abortion doctors who have a profit and they have economic interest in the outcome and they have an overriding interest in not being regulated. That is an absolute conflict of interest. Mm. And to that point, can you remind our viewers why this law was necessary in the first place? What was happening at Louisiana abortion facilities? They have a terrible record, health and safety record. 
the doctors have a poor record of with malpractice complaints and disciplinary referrals. The clinics themselves don't do any credentialing. Uh, we had unrefuted evidence of that. Um, I still find it perplexing that the chief could ignore document after document after document of terrible health and safety conditions and, and recognize that this law would actually provide some protection for women and girls going into those clinics. Mm -hmm. So where does Louisiana go from here? Is this the end of the state requiring basic safety and health standards at abortion facilities? Absolutely not. We will keep fighting. We have laws that are currently on the books now, um, including physician, the physician only laws. We have a new a law that was passed after the admitting privileges law that requires doctors to be uh, licensed, board certified, family practice physicians or OBGYNs. We have a, a number of other regulations um, that were passed after the admitting privileges law that I think help ensure the health and safety of women and girls in these clinics. So we won't stop fighting to protect life. Attorney General Landry has been very committed to this um, to this fight and we'll keep fighting and we'll keep defending the laws of Louisiana and um, and life. In the meantime, what does this ruling mean for the safety and well-being of women in the state of Louisiana? Well, I mean, I think this, this ruling puts, puts precedent over people and, and we'll keep fighting um, against that that outcome. But at the end of the day, we're just going to keep defending our laws, and now we're going to keep moving moving forward. And I think that we'll now take the, the chief concurring um, opinion, and we will bring that back to the courts. And it has moved the needle. It's moved it back to the Casey undue burden standard from Hellerstedt. That's, that I consider that to be um, a gain rather than a loss. Liz, from a legal perspective, do safety regulations even stand a chance at the high court right now, or will they all be found to be unconstitutional? No, I think they do stand a chance. And I think if you look at the concurring opinion that the Chief Justice wrote, he walked through some, some, of the, uh, some examples from prior cases, specifically from Casey and from Maserick, the Armstrong, physician-only laws, other health and safety regulations that have already been upheld by the court. I, I read that as reaffirming those precedents and reaffirming those health and safety regulations um, and, and saying that they do not create a substantial obstacle. Mm. Liz, for our viewers who may not be familiar with the Louisiana law, can you speak to how it had bipartisan support in the state? It, enormous bipartisan support. I think there were only about eight legislators who voted against it. So it was very, very widely supported. And, and one of the reasons why is because of the deficiency reports here and the testimony of women and doctors in the legislature in support of this bill. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to see um, the pro-life Democrats that are in Louisiana from your governor to State Senator Katrina Jackson, who will be joining us on the show a little bit later. Well, we're, we're going to keep on following this and just see what happens next, but we're so grateful for you joining us. Liz Morrell, Louisiana Solicitor General, thank you. Thanks, Catherine. For a continued pro-life reaction, joining us now via Skype is Marjorie Dannenfelser, the president of the Susan B. Anthony List. Marjorie is also the co-chair of Pro-Life Voices for Trump. Marjorie, welcome back. This ruling is seen as a strategy setback for the pro-life movement. Does the movement need to rethink proposed laws so they can better withstand the Supreme Court? Where do we go from here? Yeah, you know, um, I don't think we shift strategy. I think we keep going. Hmm. Um, there are many laws moving around the country that have uh, been adopted by legislatures all over that are being passed, signed by governors, challenged by courts, and different circuit courts have different opinions. That's when the Supreme Court has to step in and say what it thinks. So on, in two major areas, in the area of non-discrimination abortion laws, meaning you can't abort a baby because of its gender, its sex, or the fact that it has a disability, um, and in the area of mid to late term, so a 20 week pain capable bill, mm -hmm. when a baby feels excruciating pain from the abortion. Those two bills are passing all over the place under the conditions that I just described. Um, we really think that those two are headed towards the court relatively soon. Um, and I'll, on, on the regulation, clinic regulation piece, our people will never stop. There is no 
sense that anyone will pull back from trying to just enact basic uh, common sense laws that uh, that a, a clinic should be regulated in the way that any mm -hmm. legitimate medical a facility should be regulated to protect women. But now that the high court has struck down both Texas and Louisiana's law requiring these basic safety and health standards for women at abortion facilities, is this the end for the admitting privilege laws? You know, or will all safety requirements at abortion facilities be seen as unconstitutional? Well, you know, the, this court is so unpredictable, especially with a Supreme Court justice deciding one day he thinks it's legit, on another he doesn't because deciding a really recent precedent. Um, I don't believe that it's the end. I think this is a stuttering beginning of what will be better um, better abortion law in the future. And it is really because of the, re, the transformation of the court and, um, and what it will approve in the future. I don't think it's the end. I think we keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and one thing I know, it doesn't matter what any of us say, the legislators across the country that really believe in this, you couldn't stop them if you tried. Mm. Marjorie, many Americans cited the Supreme Court for the reason that they voted for President Trump in 2016. June Medical Services, this case was the first abortion-related case with both of Trump's judicial nominees, Justices Kavanaugh and Gorsuch, on the bench. And while they ruled in favor of Louisiana's pro-life law, the court ultimately still sided with the abortion business. Marjorie, will this week's outcome motivate pro-lifers in 2020, or does it actually reveal the court's limits in the pro-life movement? No, I don't think it reveals limits. It reveals hope and possibility. Uh, but were it not for this one justice that no one could predict, basically our new Kennedy, we would have, uh, that would, would have been upheld. And the only way that changes is that we with a really newly re-engaged, really newly intensified movement because of this decision, have the opportunity to elect a president and then more Supreme Court justice that will do the compassionate, the right thing. Every human rights movement that has ever been successful in this country has had a similar path. It's a zigzag, not a straight line. There are setbacks and there are moves forward. But we are in the driver's seat right now. Uh, and that has never been the case in the pro life. We are so close. It is not a moment to be discouraged, but to lean on the Lord and follow his plan. And that is never to be. Chief Justice Roberts has indicated reluctance to disturb any precedent rulings. Is there any chance to chip away or reverse Roe v. Wade as long as he's on the court? You seem to have hope, up, hope there. Oh, without question. There is more to come. There are more opportunities um, with more judges, even he. Um, and there is no time to falter. It's time to move ahead. Without question, we are so close. There's no time to, look, to wait. Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List. Thank you.